Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have something that uh, was discovered by another YouTuber and if you're familiar with Shariard over at the signal path you might be familiar with this unit. This is a Quant Asylum QA403. He did a video on it very recently and that's how I found out about him. Uh, didn't really know anything too much about it however Something that's really impressive about this unit is its total harmonic distortion. It can read THD down to 0.0001%. Now, that's important for a number of reasons, and he and I had similar but different needs. He had to measure a Stanford Research unit. I have to measure some SG505s. This has a THD measurement that is low enough to where I can natively measure a SG505 oscillator and validate mine. So we will get into why measuring an SG505 is so difficult here in a little bit, but for now let's get into the box and see what we're coming after. So this is as received from Quant Asylum, and here we go. We have the, what is this, the QA403. So there's an output and an input differential on both sides, right-left differential, so this can do stereo. Um, balanced stereo natively, which is good. I was thinking about creating a unit like this, similar with two uh, SG505s and two AA501s, but I was able to pick this up, and I can get at the measurements another way. The thing about this unit is, it um, for its price point, it is spec'd fantastically. The total harmonic distortion on this, I I have been hard pressed to find anything lower, even in gear that's below five figures. So, for its price point, which is a couple of hundred dollars, very very reasonable, and absolutely fantastic. Now you'll notice there's no display or anything like this. This does need a computer. It is USB powered and capable. There's a little bit of weirdness in that, and I will get into that here in a little bit. The input side, if you're going to use it single-ended, does need to be shorted, so I will put a, a BNC short on these two connections because we're going to check it. Check single-ended, but I also have um, an option to SG505, and this can measure that natively differentially because the option two is the uh, differential output. So I can even get the native differential on that one with this unit as well. So very capable and will let me check both of my 505s and my 502s to the limits of the QA403, which is actually better than the 505s. 505s have a negative 102 dB THD. This has a negative 120 dB THD. Absolutely incredible specifications on this. So, um, this can still be purchased new. This was not a um, this was not a secondary market acquisition. I bought this straight from Quant Asylum. They do not know who I am. This is not a sponsored video. This fulfills a measurement need that I've had in the lab for quite some time. So, as soon as I found out its capabilities, they got my credit card and I got a unit. So, here we go. I'm going to get some uh, PC software installed. And we'll fire this up, take a look at this, and we'll see if we can finally, finally validate my SG505s. Before we get into measuring a couple of uh, low distortion oscillators, I have two SG505s. Followers of the channel will notice this one is an option two. This is differential. We're going to take a look at that because I want to measure it single-ended because you can, you can use it single-ended with the center tap, both positive and negative side. And we'll see what it does and or does not. We also have a SG502 that's going to be um, kind of a comparator. So in terms of oscillator quality, the SG505s have the lowest THD. The SG502 is still a very, very capable oscillator. Uh, about an order of magnitude more THD than the 505s, but it was a much cheaper unit and goes up a little bit higher in frequency. You'll notice the uh, 502 has a uh, 100K button. The 505s only have a 10K button. Now they would get to 100, 
uh, 100K by hitting 10 and then taking it up to 10. So you have 10 multiplied by 10 to get 100. On this one, we can go to 500K. So a little bit quicker. The other thing that's nice is the option one SG505 and the 502 have a sync output, so I can hook a frequency counter up to these ports, measure what their frequency is, versus the 502 or the option two, which has these pin pin ports for that same function. Um, across the top here, I've got frequency. We're doing 128,000 FFTs. We have uh, THD and we have THD plus N. That's going to be important, I think, a little bit later. Uh, we're looking at peak RM uh, VRMS, and we're also looking at VMRS DBV to make sure I'm not overloading the front end of the Quant Asylum. Uh, I am taking 50 averages on each unit to kind of dial out the noise. Uh, for those who have followed the channel for a while, they will know my lab is every once in a while has some pretty stout noise to it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hook the oscillator up to the plus side port. The negative side port is shorted. <coughs> that is recommended due to thermionic noise in the input resistor when it's unused per the manual. So we have the measurement set up. We're not using the output at all, so we're good there. So what I'm going to do, and one of the things that I did take a look at was how well does it do a 4K monitor? This laptop has a 4K screen on it, and uh, screen scaling did cause the application a problem. There's a few other issues there. Um, not too concerned about that. I can work around it. Even at 4K with no scaling, I still I get great view of the frequency trace. Uh, the buttons are a little small, but very readable. No problem. The camera makes them look a lot smaller than they are. So what we're going to do is I have... Um, 192k sample rate. Uh, we're at uh, 12 dBV full scale. Shouldn't get up that high. Uh, we're only using the left channel for this because we don't need the right side. That also will take some load off of the USB cable, running it back and forth. And we're doing 50, uh, 50 averages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, um, I'm going to turn on the SG505 in the floating position, and we're going to hit run and see what happens. There's our fundamental, and we have the frequency spectrum started building. With this being a SG505, we are looking for 0.008% THD or better. We're about halfway through the um, building, and we're running 3.71 dBV into the front of the unit, so not bad. And that was 50 averages. We'll do that in real time. I'm going to zoom in to this row, and we'll talk about it. We have a nice fundamental with some harmonics and then residual noise. Zooming into the top of the screen, so how did my oscillator do? Well, we have a total harmonic di uh, distortion of 0.00027%. Now, that uh, is not taking into account any of those noise peaks. With our THD plus N, we have a 00040. So that is the total output of this particular SG505. That is half of the rated specification for THD. So extremely happy with that. Um, this SG505 is working just fine. Let's check, each, we'll run the same test each side with the option two unit and see how it fares. So I've moved the input to the option two SG505. Now we have this in single-ended mode. So we have ground on the center tap and on the plus side of the output transformer. So we'll go ahead and fire this on and we'll hit run. Fundamental is, again, good. And we'll notice we have a lot more noise down here than we did on the other tray. So I'm going to let it build, see how it gets. Oh, there we go. We're done. Let me zoom in. Okay, so we have a total harmonic distortion of 0.0020. 
very respectable. But if we take a look at the THD plus N, which is essentially everything but the fundamental, uh, we have a 00084. So slightly worse than the single-ended SG505. Actually, almost double the difference. So what we'll do is we'll fl I'll flip this measurement around. We'll do the same thing. I would expect for the negative side to have the same thing, but what is going to be really interesting is when we test it in differential mode because I think we're going to have much better results when we use it truly differentially. So the measurement setup, measurement setup is moved. I have the negative side of the Quant Asylum hooked up to the negative side of the SG505. We are in 600 ohm mode. And uh, I'm doing all of this testing at 1 kilohertz too, by the way. And we're going to take a look at, um, and I have the plus side terminated. So let's run this again. And we're hitting real close to 1 kilohertz. It's not perfect, but these are uh, free floating oscillators. They're not able to lock into really anything. So dialing in exactly 1 kilohertz is kind of difficult. But 994781 is plenty. When looking as the spectra builds, we do have some a bit more noise out here on the negative side of the output transformer. That's our 50. Let's take a look. So here we are again. Uh, THD is also very respectable at 0019, 0019. But our THD plus N is 00100%. So definitely being affected at the high end uh, with um, some of that weird noise coming out of the negative side. Let's do it truly differentially and see if we get better results. All right, we're hooked up again, this time through a differential pair. I have these funny BNC to banana jack adapters that I'm using. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this down. So we have the negative coming up to the negative, positive going to the positive. We're going to kick on the oscillator again. And we are going to tell this to run and see what happens. Well, our noise is much better in differential mode. So, yeah, we're about halfway through the acquisition process, and these numbers already look really good. Well, what that means is I am probably going to need to outfit my lab with yet another SG505. So the option two is going to have its place, but when I'm doing 501 cals and a couple of other things, it's going to be better for me to use a second single-ended 505 versus the option two. Well, it wildly meets specification. Uh, in differential mode, we have a THD of 0.0019%, very respectable, which is what we were expecting. That's just the harmonics. THD plus N, which is everything but the fundamental, 0.0031. So we are still well below the 0008 that we needed to have the oscillator hit specification. Let's... Um, Let's kick over to the uh, 502 and take a look at what a lesser, still very reasonable, but lesser oscillator outputs. Okay, I've pulled out the uh, averages. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to run. This is going to change. There we go. Now I'm going to dial this up so we hit 0 dB, dBV on the fundamental. That way we have enough signal to do a decent measurement, but we're not overloading the front end of the uh, Quant Asylum. So we're going to dial this up. Pay no attention to anything down here yet. It's going to settle and do a bunch of other stuff, and the oscillator even needs to settle, because while you're adjusting level, it uh, it's not really trying to settle. So call it about right there for signal level. We are also at 1 kilohertz. And we will turn back on the averages here for us. We'll do 50 again. Oh, too much. And we'll just let that build.
and there we go. As we can see on the 502, we have a lot higher harmonics and noise figures, so not as good an oscillator as a 505. Still very respectable in terms of distortion. This line right here is, a, is negative 100 dB. So this line down here is negative 150 dB. So even anything that's below the negative 100 dB line, that's still very respectable with respect to carrier. And uh, this makes it look kind of bad, but I'm not, un I'm not unhappy with this at all. So we have a total harmonic distortion specification of 00499. So the specification for an SG-502 is um, distortion of 035. We're at 00497, so we're in order of magnitude below specification. Even with the noise, we're at 0053, so we are an order of magnitude below, uh, almost an entire order of magnitude below the specified harmonic distortion of the SG-502. So still very respectable. So some oscillators that were made in the 80s and 90s measured by a instrument that was made yesterday. Especially doing the THD measurements in the SG-505s is a real pain in the butt. If I had known about this a while ago, I would have been able to save some money and looking around for the calibration fixture, which is the notch filters and everything like that to do the 505s. Being able to measure it raw, much easier than going through the tedious process of dialing out an SG-505. For those that have not seen that video or that process, I will link it in the description below. And uh, suffice it to say, it is a very tedious process. Learned a little bit of information about the uh, option 2 SG-505. I'll be adding a second SG-505 to the lab, or technically third, for single-ended operation, especially for when I'm doing calibrations and alignments of distortion meters. That was one of the reasons why I did want to purchase this particular piece of instrumentation, because I've had some viewers reach out to me and ask if I would do calibrations and alignments on their AA-501s and a couple of other distortion meters. As of yet, for as long as I've been on YouTube and as long as these have been sitting in the lab, I've measured these to the best of the lab's capabilities, and I even validated one using the tech process, Tektronix process. So I was reasonably confident in the SG-505s. Now I am very confident in the SG-505s and that they can perform the way I need them to when I'm doing customer units. I, uh, I don't want to take anything into the lab that I can't do to meet or beat factory specifications. That's one of the reasons for all the Cal gear that's in the lab is if I'm going to do something, especially if I'm going to do it for someone else who doesn't have access to, this, to the facilities that I do here, I want to make sure it's done right, it's done the first time, and there's no questions. So that's why I'm a bit rigid on the uh, calibration processes and things like that is because especially when I'm doing um, something for someone else, even giving ship and shipping time. Um, I've had people ship me things internationally to work on, and uh, given the cost of shipping and the time delay for shipping, um, I want to make sure it's done right before it goes back and they have no problems when it hits their bench and they have confidence in the unit and the repair. That's a little bit of um, philosophy and thought processes for the lab. I am good with these now, so um, I have to finish up, which I will do a video on when I do it. I have to get a fix for my AA501 that's kind of out to lunch in the, in the distortion side of things. And uh, once I get that fixed, I'll be able to work on some customer distortion units. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is available from the manufacturer. Take a look at Quant Asylum, especially if you don't need anything high, uh, high frequency in the audio domain. Domain, uh, Extremely capable unit. Um, I will link Shariard's video in the description below. He goes in extreme detail of what the unit can do, some more of the more fancy measurement capabilities and things like that. My main need, at least my immediate need, was validating the 505s 
and the other oscillators in the lab for their distortion specifications. I can do that now. So when I'm dialing in a, um, a AA501, I can have confidence that these are outputting the signals that I need them to. So with that, I thank you all for joining me in the lab tonight, and I hope you enjoyed. As always, I will see everybody in the comments below between videos. Hit the subscribe button, the bell, and all the links. And I will see everyone in the next video. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. And if enough people ask questions, there'll be a video about it. As always, more is on the way. Bye for now.